a sponsor for our, our summer series programs today, and we're very fortunate to have uh, Chartwell Retirement Residences sponsoring our summer series. And so we have a quick little video to share from them today. My name is Tara Hengst, and I'm a certified professional consultant on aging with Chartwell Retirement Residences. We are proud partners and sponsors of Caregivers Alberta summertime programs this year. Every day we help families who are aging loved ones or their spouses find the resources that they need to support their caregiving journey. Valuable resources such as Caregivers Alberta. These resources can alleviate stress and bring peace of mind to your situation. For more information on how you can connect and find these resources with Chartwell Retirement Residences, please visit chartwell.com. Or if you'd like to speak to a consultant in your area, dial 1-855-844-3923. Thank you so much and have a wonderful program. You're joining us for the Help I'm Drowning Managing Caregiver Stress session. Thank you for, for being here. We're going to dive right in. It's really about balancing our well being when we think of how do we manage stress, how do we cope with stress. The role of a caregiver can be both rewarding and challenging. So, in today's session, we're going to take a closer look at caregiver stress and practice a specific therapeutic technique for managing it. Uh, part of our own health and wellness as caregivers is exploring ways to foster resilience and seek a better balance in caregiving so we can avoid burnout. And there are many techniques we can utilize to better manage our stress. How do we cope with stress in our lives? What are your typical coping mechanisms and are they healthy coping mechanisms? How does your body respond to stress typically? And how does your sense of self play into your resilience or your ability to, to bounce back? From, from challenges or, or things that are, that are occurring that make you feel stressed. Stress in life is unavoidable. We cannot control it, but you have heard this. We can't control the situation, but we can control our response to the situation. We can control how we attempt to manage that stressful situation. So um, we can change the situation literally by exiting it or leaving it when we need to. We can uh, change our reaction. And there are, are four different options we're gonna talk about when, it, when we talk about changing our reaction. We can choose to avoid, we can choose to alter, we can choose to adapt, or we can choose to accept. And these are really important things for us to, to think about it as our game plan for how we can manage stress and stressful situations in, in a healthy manner. So here's the game plan. Avoid unnecessary stress. Learn how to say no and know what your limits are. Now, I understand as a caregiver, because I am a caregiver, that is very difficult to do sometimes, but we have to know what our limitations are. And when we expend ourselves completely and exhaust ourselves completely, we're not in a position to care for our loved one that, um, the way we actually want to. So it's extremely important that we just learn how to say no sometimes to others. Uh, to our care recipient, to ourself. Sometimes, you know, telling yourself, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to stop and take a break. Um, taking on more than you handle is a recipe for stress. So um, avoidance is, is an option for how we cope with stress. We can avoid people who stress us out. Either we, we find a way to turn that relationship around so it's not as stressful, or we limit the amount of time we spend with them, pure and simple. We can take control of our environment and avoid things that are causing stress. You know, for instance, if the news is stressing you out, well, don't watch the news or watch less of it. If you know that um, traffic really stresses you out, don't drive during a heavy traffic time. Avoid that time of the day. If you know the grocery store and um, all, the, all the people and the sounds and the sensations overwhelms you, do online grocery shopping. That's, that's an option nowadays, right? So what can you do to take control of your environment and avoid those things that you know are uh, a trigger for your anxiety or your stress? We can also pare down the to-do list. I know many of us, I'm one of them, have a very long to-do list every day. So what are the shoulds and the musts? How do we prioritize that to-do list um, to, to 
pare it down a little bit. So that's how we can avoid certain stressful situations. We can alter um, how we, the situation and our response to it. We can express our feelings instead of bottling them up. Uh, we can communicate concerns in an open and respectful way. That's, that's how we can alter our, our response sometimes to a stressful situation. We can be willing to compromise. You know, if, if we're asking someone else to change something and compromise, we have to be willing to do the same. So try to find that middle ground. That's an example of altering. Sometimes maybe you need to be more assertive uh, to deal with problems head on, uh, doing your best to anticipate and prevent them. Uh, maybe it's about planning ahead and improving time management. Do you, do you find yourself running late often? Uh, it's hard to stay calm and focused when you uh, are constantly feel like you're late and behind the game. Um, that's a life lesson that I'm still trying to learn. So I'm working on that time management always, always. So those are examples of how we can alter the stressful situation at hand and alter our response and our reaction to it. How can we adapt to the stressor? Well, we can reframe the problem. We can look at the big picture. We can ask ourselves, how important is it all? It's that old adage of choose your battles, right? Will it matter in a week? Will it matter in a month? Is it worth getting upset over? So sometimes just reframing the challenge a little bit. Maybe it takes us adjusting our standards. Sometimes we have very high expectations of ourselves and or others, and we need to adjust those standards a little bit. Uh, stop demanding perfection from yourself and others and learn to accept what is good enough, but it's not just good enough, it's good. So think of it like that. Um, we can adjust our attitude. We can try and see the good in people and situations, even if it feels really nasty and yucky and negative. Um, try and, and look for the, the small sliver uh, of goodness or how we can take what's happening and turn it into um, a learning opportunity for us. And that is adjusting our attitude and, and, and looking at it differently. When we do that, um, we're encouraging more positive thought and what we're thinking affects our emotional and physical well-being. So. The last piece uh, of how you can cope with stress, accept the things you cannot change. That's another old adage. Don't try to control the uncontrollable. Uh, we can look for an upside to the situation. We can focus on things we can control, such as the way we choose to react to the problem or to the situation. We can share our feelings and vent. Sometimes just that alone can help us just accept the situation by getting it off our chest and complaining about it for a minute. So find a trusted friend. Um, you know, we, we have a join a peer support group that you can vent for a little bit to, to share those feelings and get it out. Practice acceptance and forgiveness. We live in an imperfect world. We ourselves are imperfect human beings. Um, so practice that acceptance and forgiveness, and uh, it is what it is. Letting go of anger and resentment and just accepting where we are. And, and those are pieces of how we can cope with stress and manage it a little better. The next thing I want us to think about, we're gonna get into our body for a minute. Close your eyes, get into your body for a second and think about how your body responds to stress. Knowing where stress lies in your body and how your body responds to us, responds to that stress uh, is important because then you can take a moment and tune into that sensation, breathe into that sensation, breathe into that area, and it can actually help release some of the tension. So it, not, it can not only help release the tension, it, it can help relax our mind a little and help us feel a little less worried about the state of what's happening in our life. The other thing I want you to think about is your sense of self, your self-identity. If a definition of self-concept relates to how you see yourself, do you have a healthy sense of self? And who are you? outside of the caregiving role, because we tend to lose ourselves sometimes as caregivers and we forget who we are. And that affects um, a healthy sense of self. 
we have to remain attuned to who we are as an individual and um, what are we made up of? Um, what is your favorite hobby? What do you love to do when you find that you may have a brief moment or a longer moment of space all to yourself? What is it you wanna do? Uh, what are your skills? What are your abilities? What are your emotions and desires of the heart? What memories are attached to you and just who you are? We have to remind ourselves sometimes of, of these things that are just unique to us. What makes us happy? What brings joy to our life? I want you to um, tune in to your body uh, and your, your mind and your headspace for a moment and think about who you are because uh, that positive sense of self encourages our resilience. It, it, when, when we recharge doing hobbies we love or bringing joy to our life or talking to a good friend or reading a book or listening to music, it recharges you from the inside out. And we need that spiritual recharging um, to, to be able to bounce back. And that is resilience. So if you feel yourself feeling like you're low on reserves, who are you? just you outside of your caregiving role and what can you do to um, remind yourself of that. Thank you everyone for being with us today. Thank you. Um, I, I certainly want to make sure we acknowledge um, and thank again our, our sponsor, Tartwell Retirement Residences. Check out all of our programs and our events and services. You can see that on our website, caregiversalberta.ca. You can go to four caregivers tab and you'll find our program and events calendar there.